So it's important for the electorate to get the best out of their parliamentary candidates and um, yeah, and their MP. Obviously, I don't think that on the 5th of December um, 2019, the electorate as represented at the Hastings Independent Press, Hustings, um, created the conditions to get the best out of their prospective MP, who became their MP, Sally Ann Hart. So this is going into um, the book, well, it's a book of four quarters, but a quarter of it is called The Myth of the Heartless Tory and um, Beyond Polarisation in Politics. And um, hopefully people will see that patronising is a judgement that they made that um, would have been far better for them to suspend and create the conditions in which Sally Ann Hart could check in her privilege, could um, explain more clearly um, what the spectator article of her friend was trying to communicate and uh, so much grievance could have been avoided. Politics gets a bad name, but it's up to the electorate as much as it's up to the politicians to um, ensure that a greater vision can be seen. I believe it's important to have a vision, and my vision is seen to be idealistic at times, but there are three choices. as I make policies for 2066, which obviously seem outlandish, but we need to be on a wartime footing and with some pretty radical policies if we're going to turn around what hasn't been turned around in terms of addressing uh, climate destabilisation and ecological um, civilization collapse. Um, so the three choices are um, many, many deaths. Secondly, un and untimely deaths, I and mean, obviously we all die. But we're talking about untimely um, deaths that would cause any compassionate person to really feel that something that, uh, that needed to be done wasn't done in time. Secondly, if we don't have those many deaths, that it, it will be for one of the other two reasons. Because there has been a, an authoritarian, an authoritarianism that has come in, that has addressed the issues that needed to be addressed, but at the expense of people's freedom, which is one of the three values that I stand for. I stand for integrity, which is a personal responsibility and a collective responsibility. Um, I stand for freedom and I stand for the pursuit of excellence. And I don't think we should throw out what excellence has been fostered in Britain. British Greats is a great book, in my opinion. I mean, I've just been reading the section on the Canterbury Tales about how rather than uh, writing partly in Latin or French or whatever, uh, Geoffrey Chaucer was determined to write all his books in English and as a result of that uh, English became the lingua franca of the world um, so that's what Terry Jones claims in, in this from Monty Python fame he writes a beautiful piece um, about the Canterbury Tales I might put a link to some of it below um, I, yeah, it, I think it's important to be proud to be British and to recognise what's enabled us to integrate with other cultures more. I've just been watching a programme this morning on Bob Marley and realised that, with the, that, he is, that he brought in a force that really drove multiculturalism. Anger was expressed, but expressed in what I would call a hippie way. I see, because I like to think in terms of three energies in the world that create integration if used properly, the classicalist energy, uh, which is our innate wish for consolidation. It tends to come through more in later life that we want to celebrate and consolidate um, what we have in life. I'm noticing it greatly in the wake of my father's funeral last, last Friday, how I've taken on some of his traits and some responsibilities for upholding tradition. So this is all about consolidation. What do we consolidate? That's the classicalist energy. There's the punk energy, which is about making radical change and stirring things up. Unfortunately, like all three of these energies, they can go in reactive directions. And they can go in creative directions alternatively. So um, 
the creative punk took what I regard as the hippie energy of um, Bob Marley and other reggae that followed Steel Pulse as well, maybe, um, and created um, fusion. I think you've got I think you've got multiculturalism and energy and celebration in the specials, um, free Nelson Mandela and recognition of suffering in this town. Oh, it's coming like a ghost town. Bands don't play no more. Too much fighting on the dance floor. Um, anyhow, this town. The specials and the selector and the beat are two toneless and madness of course. Two tone was a wonderful combination of punk energy and um, the hippie uh, that had come from reggae. Um, so, yeah, these are, these energies are about integration. Please integrate personally. You might, if you're more of a spiritually minded person, think in terms of the more established version of your religion, the lay practice of your religion, and the cutting edge spiritual practitioners, be they hermits out in the wilderness or uh, just people who've reinterpreted some of the traditional teachings and looking for something new, they're the punks. We're all, all these forces need to be integrated and we need to recognise that religions aren't just um, about um, exploitation of people, although of course people have been exploited by uh, corrupt clergy etc. Um, religions are about consolidation on one level and a lot of our literary history we have the monasteries to thank for that so let's get a historical perspective on what has generated um, the well-being and status of Britain in the world as an incredibly small country with incredibly big impact. I don't know whether you can name any other country. I don't think there has been another country that has, um, <laughs> I'm going to use a slightly violent terminology, punched above its weight in the way that Britain has. We need to come to terms with what our weight is and, and develop a kind of global justice. Um, but that's another story. My main point this evening, this evening, it might be evening where you are, but it's morning where I am. My main point is um, to just encourage us to try and get the best out of politicians. The more I get asked, why did you stand in the last election? The more I realise that it's not a compassionate inquiry. It's a challenge as if there's something wrong in an independent standing. I mean, we all know that politics isn't at its optimum. So let's talk about um, what needs to change for politics to be at its optimum rather than have a go at those people who've found a, a somewhat different or surprising way to try and influence it. I'm as surprised as the next person that um, I've stepped in my 50s into UK politics in the way, of course, as a student union executive officer I ended up in politics. I thought I was doing it to create social events and things for um, the students in one of the sites of Oxford Polytechnic campus but of course issues like no platforming came along and as soon as the president stood up and said the executive are united against having this psychologist Hans Einsenk uh, visit this, this um, educational establishment um, <laughs> and we stand for a no platform for racist and sexist speakers. I said, hang on a second, I'm on the executive and I think this is the start of book burning and irresponsible for an academic organisation to throw out, to prevent a psychologist um, like Hans Einsenk from giving, giving a talk. That surprisingly won me the Tory support. For someone who has views that are about redistributing wealth, as much strongly as I do, I'm amazed how much more support I've had from Tories than I've had from the left in my political uh, life, both, as I say, in the early days and back again in the 50s, in my 50s. So the left gets fractured very easily. I stand for um, land value tax, which is a new tax of 3% per year, and I've met leftists who just think it's going to damage farming not able to take on how much farming needs to change 
um, f to meet the challenge of these times. We need to get on a war footing. We need far more people working the, working the land and working in a far more ecological way. So land transfer is going to happen. But at present, I only stand for 3% land value tax. And I stand for um, reducing the pension from, um, well, it's 67 at present, you to go up to 68 and bring it down to 30, age 30. I think this is the um, way to get the debate about universal basic income to the next level. I, I, I mean, yeah, universal basic income from 18 would be great, but I'm saying 30, because I think that's the transition step. Too many great ideologies and ideas do not take on account the intermediate steps well enough, the transition steps. Time banking is too, for my opinion, is too idealistic around um, one hour of one person's time is equal to an hour of another person's time. And it's too um, uninformed by things like Buddhist fundraising um, to know how to spread its practice widely within a community. You just need to speak to people who fundraise for the Karana Trust and you'll understand how to uh, cross-fertilise a community um, by door-knocking, which all time bankers I've met are too shy to do in order to uh, generate. Or if they would do it, they would do it by pushing time banking rather than by receiving what's going on for the people and, 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 and using all the skills of a, of a Karen, a Buddhist fundraiser. This is all too obscure for some people. Um, but anyhow, if you want the best out of your politicians, you would start by really working through with me how grassroots manifestos can create a direct democracy the like of which we've never seen before and almost take uh, out of, knock out of place the role for political parties. Political parties are an abstraction that, uh, that actually take away um, the power of the electorate um, from, from, and stop there being a representative MP um, I, because of course they are on a bound to do what the, what the party uh, demands of them and can ride roughshod often over the, their, uh, the wishes of the electorate or at least they're torn one doesn't get torn if one's role is an, as a mediator amongst grassroots manifestos. Um, no party loyalty. Um, I thought I'm reminded of the punk song by Auntie Pasty. Um, no Maggie Thatcher and no government. Well, no political parties, direct government, is my version of the Auntie Pasty song. So there's a little bit of my punk energy which surfaces from time to time. I try and keep my films to 10 minutes these days. You've been very generous in giving me 13. Let me know what stuck, what didn't stick, and what questions you have for me below. Um, yeah, why make a film when you're in the bath, Paul? Well, it's important for one's ideas to come from a creative place. <laughs> I'm most tempted to say, if only the hustings we all lay in our bath and we're asked questions. Um, <laughs> bath each on the stage. And we were asked questions that came from a, a chilled, kind uh, place. Rastafari, Rastafari questions. Um, then you would get the more creative response. You know, what are the conditions that get the best out of us? What creates... What generates creativity is openness, relaxation. And yet we put our politicians in a hot house of pressure and antagonism. No wonder you don't get the best out of us if that's your, your, your approach to unleashing the, create, the creative potential of those who stand for election. Please, be, <laughs> I was going to say, be good to your mother, she's been good to you, kind of in the spirit of that. Be good to your politicians, although they may represent interests which are questionable. I see in most MPs that I come across a very committed des desire to serve. So I think if you point the finger at the local politician rather than at some of the powers behind some of the political parties, you're making a big error in um, political analysis and attack. 
So um, treat some of the things that people stand for with a strong critique. Um, but Tony Benn uh, was very clear that you don't attack the person, just what they're, what they're standing for if it's not about accountability and justice.